Welcome to the channel. This video is the next in the series around the Synology NAS. Now since DSM-7, external USB serial support was dropped. In this video, we'll show you how to reinstate this and connect a USB coordinator to your Synology NAS. Create a Zigbee 2 MQTT container, connecting it to your Zigbee coordinator and make all of this permanent so that it doesn't disappear even if your NAS restarts. This can then be used in Home Assistant. So let's hit the start button and fire up the NAS. You're obviously going to need a Synology NAS. Any model will do as long as it can run DSM 7.0 or above. I found this handy list online that lists all of the models and which DSM versions they support. However, DSM 7.0 was released in 2021, so you're probably already running it, or know if you can, but best to check. Next, you'll need a USB ZigBee adapter. I'll be using an SM Lite SL ZB07, but this will work equally as well with any other USB device, such as a Sonoff ZB dongle. It's also advisable to have a USB extension cable to keep your USB ZigBee dongle away from your Synology NAS to avoid any interference. I'll put a link in the description to some recommended ones. And for the purposes of the configuration, you're going to need a computer to connect to your NAS. I'll be using a Mac, but the same process applies to Windows machines. Now, if you've not already done so, you'll need to activate SSH on your Synology NAS as this is off by default. This will allow you to remote access into your NAS via a command line. Open your Synology NAS desktop. Press the four symbols in the top left-hand corner. Search for and select Control Panel. Now, while you're here, let's check to make sure that you're running DSM 7.0 or higher. Select Info Center. Against the DSM version, you should see your version number. If this is lower than DSM 7.0, then your USB device should work already. Make a note of your DSM version as you'll need it later on. Now let's make sure that SSH access is turned on. Navigate to Terminal and SNMP. Make sure that Enable SSH Service is ticked on. I've left my port allocation as 22, but you can change this for extra security if required. Just make sure you make a note of the port for future reference. And press Apply. Now let's move to your desktop and a terminal window. In my case, this is a Mac using terminal application, but you can use the command window in Windows by running the CMD command. Start terminal, enter the command SSH space, followed by the username that you use in your NAS, at, then the IP address of your NAS, followed by a space and dash P22. Change the 22 if needed, as this is the default port for SSH. Press enter. You'll be prompted to enter a password. Enter your Synology NAS password for the user ID and press enter. Now that we are connected to the Synology NAS, let's see what USB devices are connected. Type LSUSB and press enter. Now there are two devices connected. First is my USB 2.5 gigabits per second LAN connection that boosts my LAN connection from one gigabit per second to two gigabits per second. Well worth the investment of 13 US dollars. Let me know if you'd like a video on this. This shows up as USB 2-2. I had to add special drivers for this and hence why this shows up as a USB connected device and can be accessed by the NAS. The second is the SLZB07 Zigbee coordinator, which is connected on USB 1-1. Now, although the USB device is found, it cannot be recognized as it doesn't have a USB serial connection library. Type CD space forward slash dev and press enter. Now type ls space tty asterisk and press enter. Now we should see a directory for tty usb or tty acn followed by a number. These must be present for the usb to be accessible. So how do we correct this? First off, we need to identify the package architecture for your NAS. Navigate to the link in the description for NAS package architecture. Search the list for your NAS model type. In my case, for the DS1019 Plus, I have an Apollo Lake. Next, we need to get the drivers for your model of Synology NAS. Now, these drivers were developed by a developer called Janal, but his website seems to be permanently offline now. So a developer called Robert Klepp has kindly extracted all of the drivers from the web archives and placed these on his GitHub site for everybody to download. Links in the description. Select Modules. 
select the package architecture for your NAS. In my case, Apollo Lake. Select the version of DSM that you are running that we made a note of earlier. Now we can download these and install them, but a simpler and easier way is to use the command line to install them. On the left are the commands that we're going to execute. On the right is the GitHub page from Robert that has the drivers available. I'm going to be executing each of these commands. However, you will need to modify several of the GitHub addresses specifically for your package architecture and the DSM version. This is the reason that I've not created a script to run all of these commands at once. Navigate back to your SSH terminal window. Copy the sudo su, type in your password and press enter. This will give you elevated privileges. Copy and paste mod probe USB serial and press enter. This loads the USB serial kernel module. Copy and paste the mod probe tfdi underscore sio and press enter. Copy and paste the mod probe space cdc dash acm and press enter. This loads the communication device class kernel module. Now type exit and press enter. Next we'll move across into the lib modules directory. Now we need to download the four modules that we'll be inserting into the kernel. The important part here is that the GitHub paths will need to change to the location specific to your package architecture and DSM version. This is super important, so be careful. Although if you do make a mistake, you can remove the files from the directory by using sudo rm. I'll run through these quickly to save time. Now we have all those modules inserted into the kernel, we need to configure an auto load script so that even if our NAS reboots, the USB devices will still be configured to be able to connect. Copy and paste the following three commands. There are no modifications that are required, as these are not model or version specific. Once completed, type cd space forward slash dev and press enter. Then type ls space tty u asterisk and press enter. You should now see that a new directory called tty usb zero has appeared and your USB device can now be used. I'll make the assumption that you have already installed MQTT in a container. If not, then you can watch my video in the pop-up above. First, let's make sure that your MQTT broker is working. For this, I'll be using an application called MQTT Explorer. Link in the description to the website, although I would suggest installing from your app store, be it Microsoft or Apple. Open MQTT Explorer. You should see your MQTT broker in the left-hand menu. Alternatively, add the IP address of your Synology NAS and press connect. MTT Explorer will successfully connect to your broker, proving that the MTT broker is online. Next, let's go and set up a Zigbee to MQTT container. Navigate to the link in the description for USB Zigbee adapter connect to Z2 MQTT. We'll be executing each of these three commands individually. The thing to change here will be if your containers are not stored on volume one, then change accordingly. The entry for TZ is the time zone. Change this to your specific time zone. I'll link to the table of values in the description. Once the changes have been made, we can execute the commands in order. The first two commands create the directory required for Zigbee to MQTT. The third command downloads and creates the Zigbee to MQTT container. Now, if you run with a default configuration, then the Zigbee to MQTT container will fail, as we need to make some changes to the configuration file first. Navigate to your Synology desktop. Open Container Manager. Navigate to the containers. Make sure that your Zigbee to MQTT does not have a green dot and is stopped. Now press the four symbols in the top left hand corner. Select File Station. Expand out the Docker folder. Select Zigbee to MQTT. Select Data. Now double click on the configuration.yaml. Now open the file in the description for z2mqtt.conf. Copy the contents of this file and paste it into the configuration.yaml file for the z2mqtt. Now before we restart the Zigbee to MQTT, we need to make a few changes to the file. Insert the IP address of your NAS into the two locations. This is where your MQTT is running. Once you've made your changes, press file and press save. You can now close out of the editor. Switch back to Container Manager. Right click on the Zigbee to MQTT container. Select Start. To check that everything is running, double click on the Zigbee to MQTT container. Select Logs in the top menu. You should see that Zigbee to MQTT has connected with the MQTT and that front end is now available. Let's check the Zigbee to MQTT front end. 
open a browser on your desktop. Navigate to your NAS IP address colon 8081 and you should see the usual Zigbee to MQTT front end screen ready to pair your devices. Now one final test. Let's pair a device. For this I'll be pairing a Sonoff USB Micro. A fascinating unique device. Check out the video in the pop up above for a review. Press the permit to join. I'll put the Sonoff USB device into pairing mode. The device is found and successfully paired. So we've identified our Synology NAS package architecture, installed USB support on our DSM-7 Synology NAS, created a Zigbee to MQTT container and successfully paired a Zigbee device with it. So if you followed along with the previous Home Assistant installation in the container, you are now all set to start building out your Zigbee network. If you're enjoying the Synology NAS series of videos, then consider subscribing or becoming a channel member for further support of the channel. And if I've helped you get a Zigbee to MQTT container up and running with a Zigbee coordinator, then maybe a super thanks or a PayPal donation. It's really appreciated. Until the next one.